What up, everybody? This is your boy, Dedra Cologne from House of Wrestling. This is my review for the April 8th episode of AEW Rampage. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Leave a thumbs up on the House of Wrestling YouTube channel. And subscribe to all uh, social media platforms where House of Wrestling is at. Uh, follow me, Dedra180, on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. This was a pretty dope and fun AEW Rampage. Uh... The main event, of course, was Will Yuta and John Moxley, and there has been a lot of buzz and speculation as far as man, you you got to check this match out. You got to check this match out um, from a lot of people that had attended the Dynamite, because of course this Rampage was taped after uh, this week's Dynamite, and you've seen pictures, you've seen videos, but to watch it in a you know live as it's. Uh, airing on Friday night was really cool. This match lived up to the hype and we've seen the growth of a young star in professional wrestling in Warrior Yuta tonight. Uh, it was very bloody. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later, but man, this it's, it started off with Brian Danielson and Trent Beretta. Um, I, I, I like how lately AW Rampage, they, um, they have the intro and they just get right to the match. Um, it almost has like this, um, if you want to call it early Sunday night heat, uh, Saturday night's main event type feel where it just gets right to the point. Uh, there isn't a talking or anything. It's just boom, right there. Uh, this match was really good. There was a point where Brian Danielson, uh, he's on the outside and Trent Beretta tries to jump over the rope and do like a frog splash and... Man, Brian Danielson landed that kick right in his stomach as he's coming down. Like, it was perfect. Like, I hope they have a picture of it and someone has it online because, man, that was a thing of beauty. Um, the match, great match, physical match, a lot of forearm strikes. Um, I'm still, like, I know there's people like, oh, well, Brian Danielson, he's not what, you know, what he was in, a, in WWE and, you know, there's still some people are like that. For me, I'm enjoying this run of Brian Danielson in AEW because it is a more physical, it is a more uh, tenacious, uh, very striking, um, more technical Brian Danielson than what he was in WWE. Like this is a very vicious Brian Danielson, and then adding on William Regal and John Moxley to this uh, group, the Black. Uh, pool combat club like this is fun and th this was a really good match um i i like the part where um william regal referred to the best friends and orange cassidy as imbeciles it's like ooh, that's that's gonna be good i i can't wait for the day that we get brian danielson versus uh orange cassidy just that dynamic and just you know, you have this wrestler in Brian Danielson who's, you know, serious and he loves the competition. And you have Orange Cassidy who's kind of like this lackadaisical, um, nonchalant, you could call it slacker almost. Uh, just the contrast in styles and just how, you know, would. Now thinking about it, it'd be crazy if this did happen. But like, would Brian Danielson versus orange cassidy bring out a different side of orange cassidy that the short term we're building up where we're yuda but in the long term they're building up a change in orange cassidy where he's just more serious stranger things have happened but that would be insane if that did happen um there's a lot of crossface um i like the crossface that brian danielson did to uh, make Trent Beretta tap out, he had him in a crossfade, but instead of locking his arms, he actually grabbed like his face and like started pulling up. So he had his neck like, listen, he's like pulling up. It was just like, ooh, that, I tap out. You got your fingers in your my nose and your. It's like, ooh, it looked nasty. Uh, but yeah, Brian Anderson won this match. Uh, then we go to Hook and. He's backstage with, uh, oh man, I forgot her name. Leonard Nier, was it Leslie Nier or something like that? I know she's done AEW. Forgive me, guys. Um, so he's being interviewed by a reporter. 
and he's not saying anything. It's pretty cool and everything. You know, he, it's Hook being Hook, and he throws, he goes to throw away a bag of potato chips, and Dan Howells in there. He tries to curse him, and then he's like, "What?" Nothing, and he starts eating the chips. For me, um, I don't think this is this is how like it's not clicking for me as far as how they're using Dan Housen in AEW. Um, I liked how he was at ringside and he just randomly appeared, but this whole thing with him and Hook, it just doesn't. It ain't clicking for me, man. It's it's not clicking. It was cool at first when he when he was out uh, on the ramp and. Hook looked at him and walked past, but like doing backstage segments and stuff like that, it just, it ain't clicking. Like this ain't it. Um, it's not hindering Hook or anything like that. It's just, um, you know, you have this trajectory and it's growth and it's just boop. Like it's just stopped. And it's not stopped where all oh, my, they're not going to do anything. It's just like kind of, um, I don't want to say stop. It's just uh, slowing down the trajectory of Hook. And the popularity has where it's just he's going forward, but it's like it's not as a speed like when he started, where it's just and now it's just, it's just slowly going up. Um, but we'll see how they rectify this and where this goes. But like, yeah, it ain't it ain't clicking. Um, then we go to a promo with Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, and Dan Lambert. Um, Basically, they're trading shots. Um, finally, someone um, kind of like brought it out there. What a lot of people have been saying online that, in some ways, Dan Lambert's promos are very sexist. And Sammy Guevara and Tay Conti mentioned that. Um, There's another segment I really it ain't clicking for me. Um, for me, I'm a big fan of Ethan Page more so because of his vlogs. And it just feels like we're not getting that person that's on the vlogs that every like if you watch Ethan Page's vlogs, like a lot of people watch it and they enjoy it. And it's like we're not getting that Ethan Page. That's it's him. You know, it's it. like I wish the man, the men of the year thing would like eventually end because it's just not doing anything like it's just it's giving people something to do but it's not um being productive like it's you're doing something but it's not productive and it's not leading to anything because it just you get back to the same point where it's just like okay can this end already you know and this is already i want to say three angles that they've been in you know the inner circle the Brandy Rose, Cody Rose thing that, of course, went nowhere because Cody Rose is in WWE now. Um, and now this, like, it just doesn't, like, Ethan Page needs to get away from this. Um, and, you know, the Sammy Guevara, Tay Conti thing, um, I don't know, maybe he needs to turn heel again or something, but it's just not clicking. Um, I don't know if it's because, and I mentioned this on a Dynamite uh, review, like, Honestly, AEW needs to put the title on Adam Cole. Like, they need that hot shot, vibrant, fiery heel similar to what Kenny Omega was. Because for, you know, Hangman Page has put on great matches, but, like, it's just, it, it, it's it, it's not clicking. Like, there's no, like, that fire that AEW had, it's still there, but it's just, like, it's, it's just like a bubble. There you go. Um, and it's like, it's just that one person to break that bubble. And whew, now we're there. Um, but yeah, I wasn't feeling this. Um, I did like the next segment, which was the Jericho <laughs> Sports Entertainment of the Week Award, which is so cheesy and like corny. And it was narrated by Chris Jericho, which was hilarious, man. Like, this was funny. Um, the other two segments with... You know, Hook, Dan Howells, and Scorpio, like, that really didn't click. This was funny because it led to a really uh, cool match between QT Marshall and Swerve Strickland. Um, Swerve Strickland, he's brothers over. Like, he is over, over, over. Um, start of the match, who's house, Swerve's house, crowd start chanting and everything. 
Um, pretty decent match. Um, this was probably one of the first... Actually, this was the first Swerve Strickland match that wasn't very fast. It was, you know, of course, you have the contrast and styles between QT Marshall and Swerve Strickland. So you had this big, you know, kind of like brawling, stocky style of wrestling. And then you got Swerve Strickland, just quick, boom, 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 moving, stuff like that. Um, I like the finishing move that Swerve Strickland used, where it was the back uh, heel kick where... Uh, QT Marshall, he was on one knee, and Swerve Strickland, like, it looked like he was walking in air. And he, like, jumped and walked on his shoulder and, like, kicked him in the head, pinned him one, two, three. Swerve Strickland wins. Then you get uh, Ricky Starks gets on the mic. And basically next week on Rampage, we're getting uh, Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs versus Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee. I'm all for that match. Um, I've been saying it for the past couple weeks. There is a genuine chemistry. I just wish that eventually they take this feud and put it on Dynamite. Because, let's face it, um, Dynamite could use something more vibrant and more charismatic. And I think that's one thing that's lacking in AEW right now is the a fluid, charismatic show. There you go. Um... So we go from there, we get a backstage segment with Marina Shafir talking about her upcoming match with Jade Cargill. They kind of got me believing that like Jade Cargill might lose or this might go to a draw, which I think it might. I think it might go to a draw to give the perception that a hey, Marina Shafir is a real threat and also uh keep Jade Cargo undefeated where it's just like, ooh, like there is a draw, like you're undefeated, but remember that one time you're a draw. And of course AEW likes doing that where there's a draw, but then like, okay, this wasn't the winner, like this now like, you you weren't the winner. So let's see what happens. Uh then we get go to a qualifying match for the Owen Hearts women's tournament. Uh Willow Nightingale, Red Velvet. Um the thing I did not like about this match, and I love both competitors, they're wonderful. Uh, Red Velvet, she's grown tremendously since she first uh, debuted and uh, was working on Dark. And, of course, she did the match with Cody Rhodes and uh, Jade Cargill and Shaq. I, I don't know. Like, when you, when you watch it on TV, visually, there is no way that Red Velvet should have beaten willow nightingale considering that willow nightingale one of her moves is the pounce that makes no sense now this could be a sense of red velvet's been there for a while and well willow nightingale's you know new and of course she was in ring of honors women's division so maybe there this is kind of an introduction where she will be added to the women's ring of honors women's division um but there's no way that she should have been in this. Like, no. I mean, you already have Hirokata Shida. You have Tony Storm. You have Jamie Hayter. How do you add Red Velvet? Like, that makes no sense. Willow Nightingale just had a phenomenal match with Mercedes Martinez on Supercard of Honor. And she loses to Red Velvet. That makes no sense. No sense. Um, It... How do I put it? It's like Spike Dudley beating Rikishi. Not saying that, you know, she's like that, but it's like, that doesn't, like, realistic, that don't make sense. Like, Willow Nightingale is a phenomenal wrestling, and for her to lose to Red Velvet, who's already, like, it didn't make sense. Um, but Red Velvet, she's moving on to the tournament. Doesn't make sense. Let me know what you guys think. For me, it does not make sense how Red Velvet could defeat Willow Nightingale. Like, that doesn't make sense. It A better comparison. It's like, uh, I'll you go back to the original, the guy who made it popular, Monty Brown. Like, the, <laughs> again, that's like Spike Dudley, like, beating Monty Brown, and he's got the pounce. Like, how does that make sense? Like, 
that doesn't make sense. Um, then we get a backstage segment with Tony Nese. Uh, he's been interviewed. He tells her, you know, how come you don't come with that same energy with, uh, you know, with me when, as the other wrestlers. And he's just going on and on. And then you get Mark Sterling come in. And he's like, you know what? You might need some representation. You're probably familiar with the work I've done with MJF and Jade Cargill and everything. So he gives them the card. He's like, you know what? Let's go talk. So they go, I'm looking forward to that because that's going to be pretty interesting. Hopefully that goes somewhere. Um, maybe, man, Mark Sterling needs to put a little group together, faction together. Like, you know, the Mark Sterling, inter- well, you got Tully Blanchard Enterprises, uh, Mark Sterling um, Showcase or something like that. Um, but then we get a backstage uh, segment, of course, for the main event with John Moxley, Will Yuta. Uh, John Moxley just goes on a tirade and just leaves. And of course, Mark Henry, it's time for the main event. Um, the key things that stuck out in this match, and I'm going to go through this list, people. Um, was it Will Your Neuter? You know, basically, uh, this goes back to the back. So, you know, he's, I'm not your, uh, not your friend. Uh, the match started off, Will Your Yuta just dove like he did a Darby Allen dive outside. That's the only other guy that I've seen do that dive perfectly like that, just with force. Uh, he did that on Moxley. They fought in the crowd. Um, there was Moxley Willier chance through it. Um, there was a top rope. Man, what did he do? The top. Yeah, the top rope to the table spot by Willier Uta. Like, so John Moxley is on the table. And by this point, Willier Uta, he got thrown into the um, the stairs. And he, man, he was busted. Like, like he was busted open and no pun intended. So he gets up and everything. He's just got blood glushing and everything. And Moxley, they were fighting and Moxley's outside and he's on the announcer's table. And man, we were you to just jumped up and like just dove perfectly on it, went through the table. That was a crazy spot. Um, then there was a spot where Willie Yuta was on, on the top rope and Moxley's trying to do a superplex and, um, where you has him in like this, uh, almost like a dragon sleeper hole. But then he turns and he's like raking John Moxley's back. It's like, damn, this guy's physical. Uh, then you had the paradigm shift that Moxley did. He, Wilger kicked out. Um, then he did the high angle paradigm shift, and he kicked out. Like Wilger Yuta was like fierce, and there were spots where Wilger Yuta's getting hit, and he's, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And Moxley's hitting him. He's like, come on, come on, come on. And, man, he took it. Um, eventually, Moxley put on a sleeper hold. Uh, where you tapped out. That was a great match. You had uh, Regal, Danielson, Moxley come out. William Regal looks at him. He looks like he's going to slap him and shakes his hand. And he nods at him. And then with his own blood, Will you Yuta writes on his chest, B... CC, the Blackpool Combat Club. So apparently he is a part of the Blackpool Combat Club with Moxley, Danielson, and William Regal. Interested to see who else they add to this. Um, That was a great match. The type of style that this match had, the tone and the feel. This was a pay-per-view quality match on a rampage at 9 o'clock. Like, that's crazy. And I tweeted this. I hope eventually Turner, like they put Rampage on a Saturday night, like move it out there because it's just, it's such a good show to be on so late where Granite, and for those of you who are watching this, take it from someone who drove Lyft um, on Friday nights regularly. Once it gets to 6.30, 7 o'clock, people are going out. And of course, with everything opening up and, you know, there's still requirements and stuff as far as face masks and guidelines and stuff like that in certain states. But for the most part, people are out and about. They're going out there. So by 9 o'clock, most people are either finishing their pregame and going to their first spot or their sleep. So it's a real weird thing for it to happen. But th- this was a great main event. Um I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the Danielson Trent Beretta match, uh, but yeah, for the most part, this rampage. Um, I 
it, it's hard to say. Um, I do got to speak on this, that this is the first AEW Rampage where Cody Rhodes was not on it. And, of course, this is the first Rampage that Cody Rhodes, since Cody Rhodes debuted in, uh, re- or returned to WWE. So, the first match in the main event were strong. It's just the in-between that was just, mm, um, Swerve Strickland and QT Marshall was pretty solid. So, those three matches were solid, but the... Uh, the Hook, Danielson, Dan Hauser thing, eh. the Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, I mean, what wasn't feeling that. Uh, the Marina Shafir, loved that promo. Um, the Willow Nightingale, Red Velvet, loved the match. Did not understand or like the fact that William Night- Nightingale lost, considering what she's done outside. It didn't make any sense. Um, loved the Moxley, Will You the Backstage. Uh, interview before they started the match but it was a fun rampage if you were just sitting at home just wanted to enjoy wrestling um we'll see how next week's goes i believe so they said on commentary next week's rampage is at a special time at 6 p.m central um i don't know if that or they didn't say central but it was like 6 p.m so i don't know if that's for west coast or if it's it's weird how that's going to play out Check your local listings. So apparently Rampage will be starting if you're in the Midwest and in the Chicago area where I'm at. Um, possibly be starting at 6 o'clock. All right, that's cool. Um, but yeah, it's... See what happens. But man, Will Yuta, he is with the Blackpool Combat Club. Oh, I forgot about this. They just kept... And I think I know there's a reason why... I'm, slipped my mind because it was just so casually so they casually just announced next week's dynamite for the roh title you're gonna have Monero suzuki versus samoa joe they just randomly or ran just casually like oh yeah yeah it's like what so that's gonna be a really good match next week um let's honestly let's see what AEW does next week how strong the card is and where it goes uh Let's see how Dynamite goes and see how strong that shapes out. You know, Tony Gon has said, I'm going back to putting these great matchups. All right, let's see what he does. You know, if he lives up to it or if it's just spotty where a few matches are good and then eh, 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 eh. Um, But yeah, that's uh, AW Rampage. So if you haven't, please watch that Will Your Yuta, John Moxley match. That was an intense match. Um, who knows? Maybe a few years from now, it's going to be a callback to when we were Yuta, uh, Lee Morinorti, and Daniel Garcia are wrestling the triple threat for the AEW title or something like that. Um, but we'll see. But, man, check out that match. We were Yuta versus John Moxley. That was a pay-per-view style match on cable TV. Just leave it there. At a nine o'clock, you know, Eastern uh, time slot, that match was on. Crazy. Um, I enjoyed it, but check it out. Uh, you will not be disappointed if you like a physical, just where it's physical, violent, bloody, intense, wrestling holds, and just all that. Check it out. I recommend it to you. So that is my review for the April eighth episode of aw rampage like share comment subscribe leave a thumbs up on the youtube channel uh on this video um follow me dedrin 180 on tiktok twitter and instagram thank you guys so much again like always it's not fighting over wrestling there's so much wrestling to watch just enjoy and of course if tony khan tweets about bots and anti this and anti that you know what it's all over social media so It is what it is. Um, But thank you guys. Until next time. I'm out.